YouTubers, so I got the new intro going on. Hope you like it. So we're going to be talking about adding, um, binding a drop-down list to data, and we're going to be binding in two different ways. One is using the uh, wizard um, and mostly ASPX, and the other one is using C# -sharp code behind. Um, so let's get right to it. It's uh, really not much. It's not very complicated. Um, we're I'm going to be using the uh, North uh, North Wind and Pubs. Um, database so if you if you don't have it just check out my previous video I show you where to go and how to download it and how to get the uh, script files um, in your computer um, there's uh, there's two types of projects in Visual Studio there's a, a website project and there's a, a and there's a website uh, the difference between is that the project creates a solution file that keeps track of the files and also compiles into DLLs the website um, it's a little simpler and it's pretty much a folder structure and whatever files are in your folder structure become your website so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, choose the uh, website one uh, for that just go to files new and click website I'm gonna choose an empty website and that's going to create uh, my folder structure over here um, if we look at it if we look at it you can see that it's simply um, a folder that with files inside so I'm gonna go ahead and add um, not a not a new folder I don't want a new folder uh, a new item uh, web form I'm just gonna add the default ASPX and at this point I'm gonna go to the toolbox and drop in uh, a drop-down list so drop-down list if I run the project right now it's asking me to save it if I run the project we're gonna see the drop-down list in the page of course there's nothing in it because uh, we didn't put any data in it and we didn't bind to anything second thing is to um, add let's go ahead and stop debugging go back to the toolbox and add a SQL data source I'm going to put right inside the form and uh, now I'm going to use the wizard to create the uh, uh, the data source to configure the data source configure data sources oh, of course um, I don't have anything yet so let me go to uh, so Visual Studio ships with the SQL Server Express I actually don't have SQL in this machine but I'm going to use the Express version inside um, inside Visual Studio so under data connections I'm going to add a connection I'm going to choose the uh, Microsoft SQL Server database file and in here I'm gonna browse um, into that pubs um, database um, again if you don't have it watch my previous video I'll show you where, where to go to get it pubs click open and I'm just gonna test connection should take a second click OK and now I have that pubs database attached to my instance of SQL Express okay now I can go back to my wizard in here and I can create a new connection now I can just use the drop down and there's my pubs MDF okay click next I do want to save the configuration into um, the web config file and I'll show you why later so let's go ahead and click next all we're doing right now is displaying some information inside the uh, uh, the drop down list so I'm gonna choose the authors database and I'm gonna choose two different things here I'm gonna create um, I'm gonna pick the ID the last name and first name click next query you can see a list of all that now keep something well let me go ahead and do this really quick so finish and now in here in the drop-down list I'm also gonna click on the wizard so we're not gonna write a line of code in here so choose data source and I'm gonna choose that previous SQL data source one it's always a good idea to rename your data sources to something meaningful uh, but in this case since it's just quick and dirty so I didn't I didn't do that the select data field to display in the drop-down list is what the user is going to actually see you can't you you can't select two different data members in here uh, we would have to pick one or the other but we could go back to SQL and concatenate those fields into a single one so let's go ahead and do uh, let's go ahead and do that next so uh, let's just pick first name for now and then on the select data field for the value um, you can pick anything I'm just gonna pick the ID okay click next and now if we run this project 
you can see when it comes up it shows the author's names okay now let's go ahead and resolve that problem let's say that we want to show the first and last name at the same time so what I need to do is inside of my configure data source in here I'm gonna to have to write a little bit of SQL okay it's not too bad but I'm gonna to have to write a little bit of SQL so I'm gonna go into the um, custom SQL SQL um, statements in here and what I'm going to do is concatenate both of these fields so I'm gonna put a plus in there did you see I removed the comma I'm gonna put a space and another plus okay and I'm gonna call this as author name click next test and now you can see that I have a single field with with the first and last name of the author click finish I'm gonna go back to my data bounding here I'm gonna choose data source and in the in the display one now I'm gonna select author name and I'm just gonna keep this the same I'm going to uh, restart it's gonna ask me to save the file and now when I look at it you can see that uh, the author name has changed okay um, into the first and last name so now let's do the same thing but now instead of using the wizards let's use uh, C sharp okay I'm gonna stop debugging here real quick I'm gonna go back to my toolbox and I'm gonna drop in a new um, drop down here gonna put some spaces in here and this is cold behind I'm gonna right click the page and I'm gonna go view code that's gonna take me to the uh, page load okay uh, now you can switch back and forth okay this guy is called drop down list 2 so I'm just gonna keep it like that um, again if you bring this up you're only gonna see data on the first one and no data on this one because that one is not bound to anything again I'm gonna stop and in here I'm gonna say drop down list two dot data source is gonna equal to SQL data source one the same data source that we had before and I'm gonna say drop down list two dot data member it's gonna e e equal to Actually, instead of data member, it's data text field equals to author name. And then we're going to call the uh, data bind um, function. So let's see, let's see if this works just fine. Restart, it's gonna ask us to save. Nope, cancel. See a little error there. So play again, save, yes. So now the form comes up and you can see that we have um, both drop down lists bounded to, um, um, to data, one using um, ASPX uh, wizards and the, uh, and the other one using cold behind. So this is uh, really simple, straightforward. Um, I hope it's helpful. Um, and stay tuned for the next videos. Thank you.